There has been a new hope for Star Wars, Lou, and I'm not talking about the film. No. I'm talking about the Mandalorian. The goddamn talking, Mandalorian. The goddamn Mandalorian. I'm talking about Fallen Order, the game just came yes. out, and, and Squadron. Yes. You know, yes. two sick Such Star Wars games. Fantastic Star Wars games and a fantastic Star Wars series. I know, and we got to we got to give it to Disney and the developers, obviously. You know, yeah. we we shut on Disney because the everyone the sequ- did. Yeah, because the sequels were so bad. Very bad. Yeah, they just relied too much on nostalgia, and there was just no storyline. Oh yeah, yeah. They as soon as they got the rights to Star Wars, they were like, we need to pump out store. We need to pump out new films before um, Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, and Carrie Fisher, Carrie Fisher all die. I mean, one of them did die, <laughs> but. <laughs> I feel like that was the motivation to make the film. It was like, we need to get that nostalgia ASAP. And yeah, yeah. It did not work well. No, it did not. But thankfully, John Favreau and Dave Foley, the, oh, the Mandalorian is so sick. It saved it's it, yeah. Sick, yeah. It, it, yeah, it literally saved Star Wars for uh, in this Disney era. Right. First off, you don't have to bleep me here, Dill. F*** TikTok, because TikTok <laughs> spoiled the end. I was uploading one of our TikTok videos, as we do. You know, we upload yeah. TikTok videos and all that. And as I usually have like a little scroll for like two minutes just to keep up to date with current affairs. And then, okay. bloody, before I know it, I'm seeing Luke Skywalker walking down the bloody corridor. And I'm like, oh, no. f*** TikTok. Oh. <laughs> See, yeah, you know what? I had a similar experience with a... Uh, very popular gaming network you might have heard of them um but like as soon as an episode was released they'll just put the the spoiler in their title and oh, i was like fam what few, do you, yeah. i need to catch up like give me a break <laughs> honestly it's so absolutely bad absolutely infuriated me it's so i want to find that one user on tiktok that posted that bloody video because <laughs> it really pissed me off nevertheless when I actually did get around to watching that finale, oh my god, Dill. Oh my oh, god. Oh, yeah, yeah. So good. It was, as soon as you saw the X-Wing fly, and then you was like, oh, one X-Wing. I was like, yeah, everyone... I, every, I feel like, at first I was like, are they actually going to pull in Luke into this and go from there? They yeah. really, uh, you know... The Mandalorian sort of being its own little thing. I know they had like the little Jedi thing going along and all that. They've really kept it contained, but now introducing Luke and all that... It feels like John Faroo has has sort of done what he did for the MCU, where he's created the Iron Man for Star Wars right now. I feel like, and I feel like it's just going to expand, it, isn't it? No, yeah, like yeah, exactly. Like what he did with Iron Man, he's starting like this TV series, Star Wars esque, and it's the best thing that Disney needed for Disney Plus because, in my opinion, without Mandalorian, Disney Plus is just useless. Like all of the cartoon shows are fine, but like. It's nostalgia in the end. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's yeah. no new stuff. It's good if you have like a load of kids and all yeah. that, and you just need to shut them up for like an hour, and you just throw them on <laughs> a TV or a tablet. Here you go. Here you go, Timmy. Watch, watch Disney Plus on the tablet. I don't want to pair with you today. <laughs> 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 but I think for a more older audience, yeah, there wasn't really a lot really to entice us compared to what like Netflix and even Amazon have on offer. You know, like for Amazon yeah. Prime, there wasn't really anything there. But now, bloody hell. How many more T? How many Star Wars shows are there, Dill? Oh, there's loads on I the mean, way. We've got we've got Ahsoka that's been announced now. The Book of Boba Fett, the Rangers of the New Republic, Obi Wan. The Obi Wan oh, series is going to be so you sick. You know what I feel about the prequels, Dill. I that know is you do. Lou. That oh, I Lou's going to be so excited. <laughs> He's going to be so excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for that. There's even some like, like a bloody droid story. Like, yeah. they've just covered every base. But I think it's awesome that Disney. I think after the success the Mandalorian are getting, I think Disney are looking at it's like, all right, maybe having someone that's overlooking the entire story can actually produce some good TV. And the Star Wars <laughs> universe, I, I genuinely think it's probably the best universe in like literature and media i think it's such an awesome universe that george lucas created and i don't i can't is there any other universes that you can think of in in film and tv that you think can can compete with the potential that star wars has across the board um 
The only it's other, t- yeah, the only other two is maybe like Star Trek. But the thing is, Star yeah. Trek's been going on for so long anyway. And, yeah. And Lord of the Rings, but Lord of the Rings is you've still got Lord very of the Rings. Niche. Yeah. And yeah, you've got that. You've got. I know Amazon Prime are working on something with Lord of the Rings. I don't know where yeah. it's at at the moment, but I know they've got something. Working. You've got the MCU as well, which is pre- obviously a pretty cool universe. But I think, like, with the Star Wars universe, I think Disney are finally realizing that they could have. There's a lot of potential here if you give it to the right people. And 100%. Yeah. I think Jordan Fru's shown that. He's just taken. The Mandalorians, they were all right. I didn't. Not a lot, I mean, you had like the Boba Fett's and the Jane Doe's and in the anime series, like, what's her face? The Bo Katano? Is that yeah, her name? Yeah, Bo Katan, yeah, Bo Katan. Yeah, some, some cool Mandalorian characters, but I don't think anyone really wants to see a whole series about a random Mandalorian. Yeah, no, but, I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, they're a cool species, but yeah, they were, if you walk down the street and said to someone, do you want a series about a random Mandalorian? They're not going to say, yes, please. But yeah. I think it just shows how important it is when you have someone that actually cares about the story and the lore of Star Wars, you you will make it watchable. You will make someone want to watch it and has no interest yeah. in Star Wars. No, it, yeah, exactly. And it's just interesting how the Mandalorians are so different as well. Like just yeah. by watching it, like um, the oh, I forgot the main character's name, but the main Din. character is not a different. Sorry, Din. Din. His, Din. his name's is it Din? Din Jarun or something. It's so bad that I literally just watched it. His name is Din though. It's Din or Jin. No, it's Din. It's Din. It's Din. It's Din. But like he's he's from a religious cult of Mandalorians, isn't he? And yeah. Bo Katan's completely different. And then obviously yeah. Boba Fett got his armor passed down. So like there's so yeah. many different cultures just in that to explore anyway. And that's the good thing about Star Wars is that yeah. I feel like with the films, you, you can only you can only explain so much in in, in a little time. Because obviously yeah. you don't want the film to be like four hours, which well, it, which it easily could that. be with Star Wars. Yeah, but that's what the that's what the sequels did really badly as well. They never explored anything new; it was just more of the same shit, but overpowered. Yeah. Well, this was the thing, though. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's saying I think Star Wars just works better as a TV series. I don't think that's the case. I think with films. You obviously you haven't got as much time as a TV a whole TV series, yeah. But you need to make up for that to have a more. Uh, you need to have better writing in place. You need to make it more concise, like, and that is why it was so important that they, you need to have someone overlooking, yeah, the whole series. Like, I know with the prequels, yes, the dialogue in the prequels is very questionable, and <laughs> some of the some of the plot points were a bit boring or didn't really make a lot of sense but the actual story being told from phantom menace to the revenge of the sith it was a good story like yeah. from seeing from anakin at the very start to see how he's turned to the dark side across those three films i thought the story in that sense and obviously george lucas he's a genius in that sense the story was good yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it told a very good story across the three i think that's why it's important to have someone overlooking that and that's why especially for a film where you're spending that amount of money on budgets and all that, I can't believe the sequels were that mismanaged in that sense that there was no idea of how these three films were going to play out. I oh, think no, I know. 100%. Everyone's yeah. Saying, yeah, are you telling me if you got John Furrow, you gave him a film budget and you gave him a trilogy, are you really going to doubt that he's not going to produce the goods on the big screen? I won't. No, I won't. Yeah. Exactly. He's, you have so many fantastic characters. Exactly. I think if they were to go down the route, rather than try and say, oh, we need to connect Skywalker to it somehow, or like, even though it makes no sense to have Rey as she's, I, I don't, I don't even care about her right now. <laughs> but like, <laughs> if you had like a focus on like someone like Thrawn, for example, and made him your big bad in the film, and maybe yeah. have it set after Return of the Jedi with Luke's Academy and stuff like that, rather than making him some grumpy old man or whatever. I yeah. think... Something like that would have produced a better series, and I think I know they're touching on Thrawn now, so hopefully we do get to see him more in on in action. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, with the success that they're getting now, Mandalorian, it's going to make them really process how the films get put together. Oh yeah, they will. I f- like you said, I feel like Disney, DC now understand that if they just hire the right directors and the right team, then it's just mm-hmm. fine. Yeah, like. Like the Mandalorian just made it so much easier to explore the universe because Star Wars has so much history to. There's so much empty history that we just don't know about. Like what happened in between the Revenge of the Sith and the New Hope. Like where yeah. is everyone gone? 
Like, yeah. is there is there more clones that disobeyed Order sixty six? There's, like, there's so many interesting theories and like stuff yeah. you can go into. And they're touching up on that, aren't they? With yeah. Obi Wan and the Range of the New Republic, like, and this is not even like looking even at the old Republic from however long ago that was set. Like, there's so many cool stories you can tell in the Star Wars universe. Yeah, and it just makes you question how they ended up getting Ray. <laughs> <laughs> not I, again. Not really shitting on it too much, but yeah, it, it's crazy. Like how the Mandalorian has taken something like Grogu. And, and he's become yeah. like, he has become a money machine for Disney now. He's printing out money for them. But it's crazy how one small character like that has just eclipsed the whole of the sequel trilogy. I'm sorry, I think it has. They oh, yeah, definitely. Name me something better in the sequels, better than Grodo. That could be, I, that's that's Disney set for life now. The fucker's going to live for 900 years, Dill. I know, I know. He age, He's already 50, isn't he? And he's still a that's baby what I or mean. something like that. Yeah. He's a puppet. You can see CGI if you need to and all that. So you don't need to worry about the actor dying anytime soon. It, <laughs> it's, it's genius on Disney's part. No, let's it, take one of the most beloved characters in Yoda, make him young again, and then let's have profit. Yeah, he's literally going to be like Pikachu for for the Star Wars Disney Plus era. He, do you know what? That is actually a sick comparison. He, he generally That's what I think could he is going to be like. Yeah, he generally will grow into becoming Pikachu for Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very if clever. Any, if if anyone has heard of that comparison from this point onwards, still you you were the creator of that comparison. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you genius. <laughs> but. It's not even just with the, the TVs now they seem to be nailing it on Disney. They, the games. The games are looking yeah, so good no, now. The games the games have been so sick. I've been playing Fallen Order. Uh, I've been dying a lot because the game's quite <laughs> challenging. But at the same time, it's really, really sick. I love the game so much. And again, it's a time period that we just didn't know a lot about. Yeah. So that's why it's interesting. A Paddy one escaping Order 66 yeah. and surviving. Yeah. That's so it's, it's interesting already. Like any Star Wars fan will be intrigued at that moment or point. Yeah. And then Respawn already has a good catalog of games. Yeah. And then it's just up to EA not to fuck them up. And they didn't do that. They just left them on, on their own devices. No, no microtransactions. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, do do what you need to do. Yeah. And it, it paid off. It's a really good Star Wars game. Well, this is the thing. I, st- I still question why Disney gave EA exclusive rights. Obviously, there was a lot of money in play. And I think at the time, Disney yeah. just wanted to get a return on their investment, which is why they gave them the rights for a lot of money and they pumped out the sequel trilogy. But yeah, the Star Wars property for gaming, again, I cannot really think of a of a property that has that much potential for not just like action games or fps's you can literally do anything in the star wars universe for any genre it's crazy i know yeah think about if cyberpunk got their hands on a property to redo the old republic as an rpg yeah how awesome that would be sick you know yeah. You've got all these different game um, developers coming up now who all are specialising in their own like their own niche and genres. And the Star Wars universe, you can literally do anything you want. With it. If you want to do strategy, if you want to do city building, you know, you've got all these different... Yeah. You can apply it to Star Wars so easily. No, you can. Yeah, that, like you said, that's such a, that's such a cool so- concept because st- like you said, Star Wars, you can plop it anywhere. Yeah. Like... Like, um, what's, what's that coming? Creative Assembly that made a Total War game. Yeah. A Total War Star Wars game would yeah. be sick. Yeah, exactly. And you don't even... No, one, no one's going to argue about that. Yeah, you don't even need to apply it to, like, the Jedi and all that. There is a lot of planets in the Star yeah. Wars universe, and a lot of them are always in, like, Civil Wars and stuff like that. You can easily just pick mm. out one of those planets and just have at it. I know there's been a lot of, like, hype now for people wanting a Bounty Hunter game after watching The Mandalorian. And to be honest, watching the series, yeah. it feels like you're watching the game. The guy goes around to a planet, has to fulfil a task for someone to get what he needs to continue his quest. It literally plays out like a game anyway. Oh, yeah. And yeah, exactly, yeah. Imagine if they made a game like that where there's, like, a Bounty Hunter system. You can hop over to different planets and stuff like that. I know you don't like uh, the, the latest or the most recent Mass Effect game, but the environments <laughs> and whatnot themselves were really cool. Imagine if they no, just they took those environments yeah, and adapted them to the Star Wars universe. You know, like, there's so much potential there for on, on the gaming front. They could really dominate... Disney could really dominate the gaming area if they... 
I hope they they expand their license to other developers, and that's not EA because I think that it's just gonna hinder that. Yeah, no, it is. I think I think the main like the main reason they did it was money, but I feel like oh, yeah. because EA makes so much money, yeah, they're only looking at it as a high production end. Yeah, you know what I mean. But like, it doesn't have to be like that. No. Like, there's even like pixel graphics. Yeah, like. As long as the gameplay is good, no one really cares what the game actually looks like. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think, I think I'm hoping they've realised it with the TV series. We're going to keep referencing the Mandalorian deal because it's probably one of the best TV or live action Star Wars have done ever. It's, <laughs> but, it's start. Yeah, it's started. No, it's fine because it started a new era of Star Wars. Yeah, so, and this is know. the thing. I think this is where Disney got wrong in the first place. When, when you've got a product as good as Star Wars, right, you're going to get someone's money, but you want to make them give you their money because they genuinely like what you're offering. You don't want to try and find ways to take yeah. their money, like with loot boxing on Battlefront 2, which, and Battlefront in general, which EA started doing at the very beginning. You don't want to try and find oh, yeah, ways yeah, yeah. to take people's money. You want them to give you their money. And I think exactly if you produce all these really cool genres of game of Star Wars games, you are going to take so much money from people if they know that there's a lot of care that's been put into it. I think that's why everyone loves The Mandalorian now. The Mandalorian has done something I didn't think was possible, and that was United <laughs> Star Wars fans. I think... No, yeah, exactly, yes. You always, right. I think pre, people that love the prequels, people love the originals, people that... I. I don't know yeah. if they exist, but people that love the sequels, you know, I th- <laughs> <laughs> do they exist? I don't know, but <laughs> I, I, I think it would be hard to find anyone that would say the Mandalorian sucks. I think everyone who is a Star Wars fan will agree that the Mandalorian is some fantastic TV f- as a Star Wars fan. Yeah, I'm sorry, there is no one on Earth that will say uh, the sequels is actually better than the Mandalorian. <laughs> like I would slap that person. <laughs> you go I'll go over to that them. person. I will slap them so hard. With your, like, with your what are you slipper. Talking about? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it, like you said, it blends all the eras together. Like it was six scene Ahsoka that we've only seen in the Clone Wars. Yeah. It's just like there's just so many cool things about it. And again, I think it just stems back to the point that it was made by people that genuinely care about yes, about yeah. about what they're producing you know like all the little mm-hmm. easter eggs and all that they they littered i know and people will say with the finale that it's a bit fan service but i was like why is that a bad thing you know it's why is it a thing, bad yeah. why is fan service a bad thing you're literally rewarding the people that are invested into what you're doing why wouldn't you want to reward them with something awesome like having luke show up and just destroy a battalion of all those dark troopers like yeah, you might if if your if your complaint about the Mandalorian is that it's too fan servicey, then pff, I don't know what to tell <laughs> you. Like, I'll happily take that as my only complaint about a series that there's too much fan service. <laughs> yeah, especially where they were before, because the sequels basically flopped. Yeah, and Disney Disney was like relying on this. Yeah, and John Favreau and Dave Foley was just like, "Don't worry, we've got this." They bailed them out, and they just yeah, they bailed them out. Literally, get out of jail card. You've also got the there's a lot of plans apparently. There was a lot of rumors going around about yeah. animations, and one of the biggest rumors going around is that with Luke Skywalker and Grogu, that, that it could be an animation series about Luke's um, starting up his temple. That would be sick. There has been, be there really has cool. been rumors that it's going to be an animation thing. And again, the Clone Wars... I, I, I wasn't really into Rebels. I thought Rebels was pretty lackluster compared to what was produced at, towards the end, or for the majority of the yeah. Clone Wars sort of um, run. But again, with animation... I mean, Star Wars has always done well in animation. They, they, the original Clone Wars oh, back has, in 2003 yeah. had the original Samurai Jack um, creative team and all that. Like They've always done pretty yeah, decent. Yeah. And again, Disney is sort of a match made in heaven with Disney because obviously they've dominated animation for over a century now, really, haven't they? You can't be far off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, it's <laughs> another medium where they can really dominate that stuff. Where they can, if they, and this is the thing about making Star Wars more family friendly, which I don't really agree with. If I want to see someone's limb get chopped off, it should happen in Star Wars. They, yeah. they did it non stop in the prequels where arms and heads would get in, the whole bodies were getting sliced up. And then, like, you see in the sequels, 
I think that there was one scene in the snow where Ray just, no, not Ray, where Kylo just whips Finn with his lightsaber and like it barely cuts his jacket. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah. that's stupid. Why not? <laughs> why not start making animations, animated films, animation series for the kids to get them into Star Wars, and then let them grow into watching the films as a slightly older sort of person? You know, like there's so much yeah. potential there. No, there is. Yeah, animation. Yeah, Disney. Disney will do well in any animation and like i think star wars visions is like an anime like cartoon anyway so i think they're going to link up with japanese um, producers and studios yeah and you know that that as well would just be amazing because how how can you get go wrong with disney disney animation and the best animators in japan yeah and working on a property like star wars yeah yeah, exactly. It, it, there's not a lot going wrong there, if you were to dip in that. And that's the thing. I it's know. another medium where Disney can really dominate. And with, with how the sequels flopped, and not everyone was shitting on Disney for it, and rightfully so, but at the same time, this is Disney we're talking about. They're, they're one of the biggest... They are the biggest entertainment company in the world, aren't they? There's no one bigger than Disney. Yeah, yeah they are now, yeah. They must be. They bought everything. <laughs> yeah, they bought everything, <laughs> so they must be the biggest one, yeah. guy. They will eventually get something right, especially when there's a lot of money to be made. And yeah, I think now with the Mandalorian and the success they've seen from it, they're not gonna say, "Oh well, let's just go back to what we were doing for the sequels." And no, I feel no, like no do that I feel like someone, I feel like one person we haven't really talked about that needs to have a special mention as well. And I think mm-hmm. like a lot of Star Wars fans will be like, "Whoa!" Is is, Kath- <laughs> is Kathleen Kennedy as well? Everyone was first to shit on her for the, the sequels. And right again, rightfully yeah. so. But she was also yeah. the one that greenlit these projects like The Mandalorian. How much influence that, that she had, true, I don't to be know. Fair. How much influence she had on the series, I don't know. But you can't shit on someone yeah. when they had the fails and then, well, The Mandalorians have it. Obviously, a lot of The Mandalorian success is down to uh, Dave and John. You know, it's down to those two. Yeah. But. Yeah. As her role, it's her role as well to green like these sort of projects and stuff. She could have easily said, "No, it's not happening." You know, there's yeah. you sort of have to praise that. She, hopefully, she's realised that with the sequels, there wasn't a lot of mistakes made with how it was put together and how it was organised behind the scenes. Hopefully, hopefully, Kathleen has changed her ways. Still, I think she has. I think the sequels is definitely like a lesson for her. Yeah, and like she was just more focused on the mandalorian all and all of these shows yeah which is obviously a good thing going forward and to be honest i don't think disney is gonna rush to do a star wars film in a while because why would they yeah they will like, they, they could easily use it to build up disney plus at this point yeah like they they've got all of these tv shows i don't think like they're gonna make a film in a while to be honest i don't think we're gonna see a star wars film till like I don't know, 2024? Yeah, Solo really killed it for them. Oh, yeah, Solo, yeah, Solo was terrible. I think Solo, be- I think it was the lowest ever grossing Star Wars film. And I think that's when yeah, they realised. and it's about Han Solo. Yeah. And it's about the, one of the best characters in the in the prequel. Who never so, needed yeah, if you, <laughs> who never if you needed flop a backstory, that, then... yeah. Never needed a backstory, but yeah, we'll give him a backstory. Yeah. I think after that, there was alarm bells. Like, they can do good Star Wars films like we saw in Road 1 probably the best Star yes. Wars film oh, yeah. under Rogue Disney's belt at the moment. Um, yeah. You can see when... You, and again, that had, it didn't have a lot of tie-ins with the Skywalker family. Like, they obviously had Darth no. Vader in it and that was probably Darth Vader at his best. And mm-hmm. I like... I Again, I, I like the Skywalkers. I think that's what Star Wars... I know it sounds weird that it's such a big universe, but I feel like when you tie it into the Skywalkers, it just makes it that a little bit more special. But not when it's forced in front of your face, you know, like how they utilised yeah. Darth Vader in Road One was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And I think it, having that, time, it just has to feel natural. It, exactly. Like, yeah, not like the Rise of Skywalker. Bloody hell! Like yeah. we get it. It's <laughs> you don't need. To, yeah, like I think that's a good point. Making it feel more natural and how you insert them in naturally. It would, yeah. And then you just have to harvest what you sow or whatever the saying is. I don't know. <laughs> you know when you plant your seeds and you harvest it or something. I'm not a farmer. <laughs> but 
<laughs> when you let something happen naturally or not, people are going to respect it. And that's why I think, again, with Road 1, everyone loves Road 1. You won't get a lot of people that did not like Road 1, even though it's a pretty sad film in the end. It's still an amazing film. And, no, it is. And hopefully, yeah. yeah, maybe in the few years' time, Disney will produce something like Road 1 or really give another trilogy a try again and smash it this time. Yeah, I mean, they're doing that series called Andor, aren't they? Which is the main guy yeah, in Rogue One. Yeah, I'm not too sure. The only concern I'm going to have with Disney, like, I do think Star Wars is on the right path again. The only concern I will yeah. have about Disney is that they're going to give a bloody series to everyone. What, what, oh, you mean, like, just any character? Yeah, any random like, character. I'm not being funny. Again, don't get me wrong, Andor might end up being a great series, but at this moment in time, did anyone really ask for it? No, they didn't. <laughs> That's... I know what you I know what you're I know what you're saying. Like I understand. But it's the same I think it's the same thing with the Mandalorian thing. And like no one asked for I a suppose, Mandalorian series. But like, like, but yeah, but that's yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it'll be in I just hope they don't go down that things like, oh we need more series for Disney Plus. Let's just give let's give C three PO a bloody series or something like that. <laughs> the C three PO series will be the best series. <laughs> 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 You know, or, I mean, if they were to give a series to one character, if I was ahead of Disney, I would do it just to troll everyone. I would give it to Jar Jar Binks. I would just give him a series. I think it'd be so funny. I think it would be fired straight away. Are you, Jar Jar are you telling me if, if they announced the Jar Jar Binks, you wouldn't even watch the first episode out of curiosity? I would. Yeah, but I would only watch the first episode. I don't think anyone would be invested in a whole series of Jar Jar. That's what life would be like if i was in charge of disney deal jar jar such a troll you get a series you get a series <laughs> <laughs> jar jar c3po would be the best it'll, dynamic deal yeah it'd be like a cop buddy film <laughs> oh my god the worst cop buddy film ever <laughs> it's not a game it's a 